Thank you, Andres, for the introduction. So let's talk about Google Play and why it is not the only store for Android apps. It is not the only choice for users, and it should not be the only choice for developers. I don't know how, how, if you know, but there are many, really a lot, a lot of Android app stores out there, and I believe the developers should at least publish their apps on some of them. And today I will talk about these stores, and I will share my experiences with them. But before I do that, I really want you to take a look at this photo. I made this photo for three reasons. And first one is the most important one. I know there are not many here of you, but I really wanted to say hi to all of you in your mother language and privet to you, Svetlana. I don't have Russian here. <laughs> and the next one is this Android lady. She represents me. Now, I would like to know, are here any other Android developers? Would you please raise your right hand if you are? And your left hand if you have at least Android device, which I hope some of you do. Wow. A lot of potential users for few developers. That's great for us. And the third reason for this photo is simply that I wanted to show you one of my app, because all of these speech bubbles were made with one of our app. And you can find the apps under this unpronounceable name. But you are welcome to download them, uh, you, to download them, but please do this later. So now let's take a closer look at Google Play. Does anyone know what's the number of apps right now in Google Play? What do you think? Let's say 500 million. No, <laughs> we are not there yet, and hopefully never will be. Some other guess? 4 million. Well, it's a bit less. It's 2.8, 2. and that means 2.8 million of competing apps. And this is a lot. And by the end of this month, there will probably be 2.9 million which means play is crowded, is really crowded. And it's hard to make a break if you are a developer. It's really hard. Maybe you can relate to this. Uh, and the situation of Google Play looks pretty much like this photo. As on this guy, uh, we have also on, uh, on uh, Google Play some big, bright, shiny stars, which represent apps that Everybody want, knows them, everybody wants them, and everybody has them, like uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, Pokemon Go, you know what I mean, and Talking Tom, of course. <laughs> and then there are some smaller stars, we, they are still visible, the, but they don't shine so bright, means they don't have so much users, but they still have some, and some of our apps could be in this category. And then we have really, really huge, black, black space. And this represents all the other apps, the majority of, of apps, in fact. And these are the apps that almost no one knows they exist. No one uses them. And that's pretty sad for the developers. They have, we have invested such, oh, sorry, such a lot of time and effort in developing the apps, and then in the end, no one uses them. And I ask you, how can one find an app if situation is like this? And I will further illustrate my point. I will just add a new app to the scene. Do you notice any difference? This photo has originally two megapixels, which means each app gets less than a pixel. But I was generous, and I gave to this uh, new app four pixels in pink color. And tell me, can anyone see where I place this? I will encourage you, I have promo codes for our, one of our paid apps for everyone who will see this new app. It's in pink. Well, it's, it's there, I can prove it to you, but sorry, but you didn't have a chance. It's hardly visible. And this is what actually happens to apps that don't put a lot of promotions in, on them and did you know that more than a third of apps, that's more than a million, have less than 100 downloads? 100. Pretty depressing. But in Android world, all is not lost. Because, as I said in the beginning, there are many, many Android app stores there. And I have uh, placed our apps uh, on this store since the beginning, back in 2012. And, uh, 
just wants to be clear, I'm not talking about the stores that already have your app and you don't even know this, but I'm talking about the stores where you control the whole process, where you open your developer account and you put your every update out there. So let's see which stores are there. The first one, ah, uh, no, 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 this, sorry. Other the pros. Of course, uh, you can get greater visibility on some store because the stores are not so crowded. You get the chance of millions of other users because Play is not pre-installed on a lot of devices. And then there is uh, also one special factor, but I believe only developers from non-merchant countries like Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, uh, and Macedonia is. And this is actually the ability you can sell apps on other stores. And what are the cons? There aren't many, but there are. You will have to make different uh, size of icons and screenshots, but that's not like a big issue. It's better if the references to Google Play, if you have any, are replaced with references to the particular store. And of course, it will take you some time to open all the developer accounts and publish the updates to, to the store. But luckily, some stores, they do support some special format for uploading. It's so-called application description file. Uh, does anyone have heard of this format? No, it's basically uh, a format where you put every, uh, every description, every icon, every privacy policy category, etc., in one file. And then you just upload this file to the store, so it makes the uh, uploading process easier. But the sad part is that not a lot of stores support this format. But in the end, I think that the benefits are be greater than cons. But now let's see what these stores are. First one is no surprise. I'm sure you've heard it. It's Amazon. You can have free apps. You can have paid apps there. You can have in-app purchases. <coughs> and while you are in Amazon, you can also explore other uh, monetization methods like uh, Amazon Mobile Ad Network, Amazon Underground. Amazon, you can have even Amazon Associates in your apps, and there is this merge. User base from um, Amazon is worldwide, and it's also, Amazon is also pre-installed on all of the Kindle uh, Fire devices. As you probably know, Fire is based on Android, so usually that on Android apps will, sorry, I need this. The Android apps will work perfectly on a, uh, Fire OS as well. And uh, what I have written, aha. Developer console is pretty okay and approval process is also nowadays uh, quite fast. The second store I'm going to talk about is a little bit less known, but it's still a, a big place. And it's uh, SlideMe. Uh, you can also have their free paid apps, in-app purchase, and they also support open in-app billing. Open in-app billing is, as the name suggests, a standard for open in-app purchases. And also, I have read that Amazon and Google Play also support this uh, standard, but I haven't tried this yet. Uh -huh, and uh, I'm not sure what the exact number of user base of SlideMe, but I'm guessing it's pretty big, because the SAM application, that's the application you need if you want to go to SlideMe. It was downloaded more than 170 million times. And it's also, SlideMe is also pre-installed on some devices. But what is interesting about SlideMe is actually the number of apps. The SlideMe is not crowded at all. They have only around 30,000 apps because they say we prefer quality over quantity and you won't find there any junk, spam, malicious, or even repetitive apps. And in fact, one of our apps was rejected because they say, well, it's too similar to your other apps. We, you can't have it there. And they're also quite strict about terms and conditions, so you'll have to be careful. But otherwise, I would suggest a slide me, um, I would suggest a slide me as your choice. The third store is Opera Mobile Store. You probably know Opera Mobile Browser. Opera is a cross-platform, cross which means that you can also find apps for other platforms. Uh, you also can have their free paid apps, and they also support this stand application description file standard that I went talking uh, before. And user base is worldwide, and they say they uh, 
have more than 100 million visitors per month. So I guess it's your, it can be your store. I'm not sure about the number of uh, applications because I saw two different numbers and I'm not sure which one is the right one. Uh -huh. And here below, this is, this is, these are the links to the developer accounts to the particular store. Uh -huh. But uh, I will take a list of some three additional stores. I won't go into the details, but just to name them, Gejar, Yandex and Mobango. You may want to try them. But now let's go to, Yandex is from Russia, <laughs> you probably know. But now let's go to Asia, because really interesting thing happens in Asia. And first one from Asia is in, from Iran. It's Cafe Bazaar. You might be thinking, well, it has only 30 million, what's the, what's the point? But I will tell you a story how I discovered this store. So one day I was going through uh, Google Analytics and I saw that a package name for, for one of our app was changed, which clearly means the app was pirated. And by the way, I really don't know this uh, issue. I mean, if the pirates, they bother enough to change the package name, they add permission, they even change the code itself, why they don't change Google Analytics code? Well, that's really beyond me. But, that's, but because they don't, I am able to find them. And so I tracked this application and I came to this Cafe Bazaar store. And the store actually looks pretty well. So I emailed them and they, uh, they responded to me quite uh, fast. And they removed the app and they asked me to become a publisher. And I'm always looking for new opportunities. So I said, yes, I'll join. But the trick was because uh, Cafe Bazaar is actually the only store that I mentioned today that you need to pay a fee in order to become a publisher. Of course, you have to pay on Google Play, but all the other stores are for free. And the trick is that uh, the fee was, is very low, like 50,000 Iranian reals, which is like a dollar and a half, not much really. But the trick is how to pay this, because they only had, I don't remember, but it was some strange credit card. I, I couldn't get it to them. But I said, well, I started the process. I'm going to finish it. And I emailed them, and they eventually waived the fee for, to me. So now I have a paid app on Iranian market. And I must say the apps do sell in Iran. They don't sell in large quantities, but they do sell in Iran. And uh, yes, uh -huh. the app doesn't, need to be trans doesn't have to be translated to Persian. I'm guessing it's better if it is. Oh, mine is not. But the description has to be translated also to Persian. Now let's go to China. China is really a big country and it has really a lot of app stores out there. And like three years ago, one of the stores, Baidu in particular, they actually emailed me and they asked me the permission if they can, uh, if they can publish our apps on the store. And at the time, I didn't want to bother with um, Chinese store, so I said, yes, as long as you don't change anything, yes, you can do this. And they, then they were to Baidu. But like two years ago, I applied for a developer account on uh, Xiaomi. If I didn't say this correctly, please don't hold it against me. You know what I mean. Xiaomi or whatever is a manufacturer of Mi phones and tablets. And when I applied as a for a developer account, this is what happened to me. I didn't get arrested, but I had to send a photo of me and it was specific instructions how to make this photo. They said it has to be, I had to hold my identity card in front of me. My elbow should be visible. There was actually like a point of arrow, your elbow should be visible so that no one else would hold the identity card. So if you don't want to bother with this, you probably won't go to Xiaomi, but I did bother. And I'm sure glad I did because Xiaomi is the best alternative store for us. Mo uh, from all the alternative stores, most download downloads have came from this store. And for the time being, there also most revenue came from this store. And Edmork, at Mop, sorry, you probably know it, it's Ad Network from Google, works perfectly in China. Uh -huh, and you can also have free apps, as you can re uh, uh, read. Xiaomi is primarily based in, I mean, uh, primarily users are in China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan, but I have seen in Google Analytics that users are coming from all over the world. 
Uh, uh -huh. And you can also claim your pirated apps, as I did again. Actually, I found two apps there, here. And I also emailed them, and they were also quite uh, very uh, cooperative. They removed the apps, and so I could, I was able to put our apps there. Uh -huh. Developer console is also in English, so you can get around. So and I'm just briefly mentioning the stores that were not, uh, they, they were just a complete waste of time, at least for me. Uh, sorry, I won't do it again. And I'm sorry that also the LG Smart World uh, App Store was a waste of time. Uh, the developer console is terribly, and I eventually gave up. Now, in Android development, there are really a lot, a lot of app stores. I know I haven't covered them all. It's impossible. And I'm not really sure why I haven't published on Samsung app stores. I guess I should. Um, that's something that I will definitely fix in the future. And I will also try to get to some other Chinese app stores like Huawei. I'm, I have a target for Huawei. So I would like to end my speech with a message. If you are an Android developer, do make trouble and do put your apps on other stores. And if you don't have time, just think China. So this was all. If you have any question, just ask me. Thank you. Do you have any ideas how to improve the Google Play Store to be more like the ones you... Well, it's a lot of work. First, of course, you have to uh, optimize your, as you probably know, your description. Uh, you have to know in which category you place. You certainly don't want to go in the categories like games. They are overcrowded. You have to find a niche category. And probably you have to pay some money. I didn't actually, we, we didn't pay because we, ha we have started like five years ago. We have now some traction. But nowadays, I think you will have to pay for advertisements. Sorry. Uh, for what? For advertisement, you can pay whatever oh, you. No, I, I meant the developer's account. Ah, uh -huh, it's twenty-five dollars. It, okay. I think it's dollars. Yes. So any. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, can you just repeat them, please? Ah, uh -huh, sorry. The question. Uh -huh. I will repeat yours. So did you try with paid models and to the ad model? For the same app different Actually, as a, uh, for different stores, no. But as I said, I have one paid app that's on Google Play, but it's on uh, it's not on my account. It's on different account. No, but all, a usual place only. It is. Uh, aha, no, 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 I'm I'm lying. Sorry. I have placed a one paid app also on SlideMe, but they're actually didn't make any sales on SlideMe, but their free apps, they do get installs, but paid mine didn't, so. And I didn't repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> the question was uh, how safe it is if the other stores check the application. So the answer is yes, some of them do. SlideMe definitely does. Also Amazon test, it's an automated test. As goes for others, I'm not sure, really sure, but as a developer, I really don't kind of think it's, it's my problem, you know. <laughs>